Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video and show you the similarities and differences between sales tax and value added tax. And basically sales tax are the taxes added to sales for finished goods and uh, services in the US, while VAT or VAT, you can call it VAT or VAT, is the tax added to goods and services in the EU, um, UK and uh, some other countries. So basically they're very similar in concept, but they are just different in the mechanics of at which stage of the supply chain they are added to an invoice uh, of a sale. And so I wanted to walk you through that uh, through an example of manufacturing a vehicle. So we'll go through the example of sourcing the parts of the vehicle and then assembly of the vehicle and then uh, selling the vehicle to a dealer, which then turns around and sell it to the end consumer. Uh, and then once we go through that, you'll understand uh, the invoicing process and when the tax gets added to an invoice. And then after that, we'll walk through just some of the main differences between uh, the two types of tax. And if uh, this all sounds good to you, go ahead and uh, give us an early like so that this video can reach as many people as possible. And uh, without further ado, let's dive into today's video. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna and I'm the financial controller. I've been in finance for the last 15 years. I've been a, an auditor at PricewaterhouseCoopers, a financial analyst and a controller, uh, uh, both in public and private companies. And this channel is all about giving you the summary of my experience uh, over the last decade and a half. So if you're in finance or if um, you own a business, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And now let's jump into today's topic. Okay, so going through the example of manufacturing a vehicle. So let's assume that this car manufacturer needs to source the parts to assemble the vehicle. So they will go out and buy a steering wheel and a seat and all of the things that they need to assemble a vehicle. And so they'll go to a uh, supplier of steering wheels and buy a steering wheel for $100 each. So if the price of the steering wheel is $100, then the steering wheel manufacturer will sell it to the car manufacturer for $100. And rather than adding sales tax to it, what they do is they uh, obtain a reseller certificate from the car manufacturer, basically saying that this uh, steering wheel is purchased for the uh, purpose of reselling it, because basically they'll take it, add it to the vehicle, and then resell it after that. So once they have that reseller certificate, they can uh, issue an invoice at $100 to the car manufacturer. The car manufacturer then manufactures the car uh, and then wants to sell it for $20,000. So they turn around and do the same thing with the dealer. They get a reseller certificate from the dealer and then um, send an invoice to the dealer for $20,000 without any sales tax added to it then the dealer will take the vehicle and they want to sell it to the end consumer for $30,000, let's say. Uh, so if the price is $30,000, they, they go and they sell it to the uh, end consumer for $30,000 plus sales tax, whatever the sales tax that are applicable, every state is different. Um, let's say it's 10% sales tax, so then this becomes um, $33,000. Uh, for the final price and basically from the 33,000 30,000 goes to, to the dealer and 3,000 goes to the government and so basically this is how sales tax would work uh, no tax is added in the supply chain as long as you can obtain a reseller certificate from every uh, company that buys the, the part to manufacture and, and add to it and make it into a finished product. So basically the only sales tax that are added is at the final uh, stage when it's sold to the end consumer uh, for 33,000, 3,000 of it will go to the government and that's the sales tax. Make sure to download our balance sheet metrics cheat sheet. It's 100% free and an amazing resource, especially if you're a financial professional, finance student, or into stock investing. I'll leave a link in the description, so go ahead and check it out. And again, it's 100% free. Now let's walk through the same scenario, but let's say this is a country that implements a value added tax. So let's say this is the UK or the EU, and let's say we have a manufacturer of the steering wheel, and they also want to sell the steering wheel to the car manufacturer for 100 euros, let's say. So it's the same, let's, say, let's make it the same numbers, so it's the apples for apples. And let's say they are selling it for 100 euros. So uh, in VAT, you need to add the tax in every stage of the process. So the steering wheel manufacturer will add uh, 10, which is 10%, let's say the VAT is 10%. So they add uh, 10. So basically the invoice that's gonna go is gonna be for 110 euros. And then the car manufacturer, uh, you know, they wanna sell the car to the dealer for 20,000. 
they will add uh, 10%, which is 2,000. So they will send an invoice for 22,000 euros. Um, basically, what's ha what happened here is that the steering wheel manufacturer uh, collected 10 euros in VAT. So they'll, they'll report that to the government. The car manufacturer basically collected 2,000, but they get to deduct. They can deduct the 10 euros that they pay to the steering wheel manufacturer. So 20, uh, 2,000 uh, that they collected from the dealer minus 10 euros that they pay to the steering wheel manufacturer. So they get to deduct that and they only remit to the government uh, 1,990 euros. That's the number that goes to the government. So, so far the government got 10, 10 euros from the steering wheel manufacturer and 1990 euros uh, from the car manufacturer. Now the dealer will get the vehicle for 22, uh, 22,000 euros and they also wish to sell it, um, the, the price that they have in mind is 30,000 euros. So they will turn around and sell it to the uh, end consumer for 30,000 plus 10% uh, VAT, which then will be 33 thousand euros what they do is in this case is that they remit to the government um, three thousand but they get to deduct also the input uh, VAT which is the two the two K that they got charged an invoice from the car manufacturer so minus two thousand equals one thousand so basically at the end of the day, what the government will be getting is a thousand from the dealer, 1990 from the manufacturer and 10 euros from the steering wheel manufacturer, which at the end of the day will also add to 3000 euros. So basically at the end of the day, it works the same way. Uh, the government is getting $3,000 uh, $3, in the U.S. In the, case, in the case of a sales tax. And the government here is getting also 3,000 euros by getting them uh, in, the, in the terms of 1,000 from a dealer, 1990 from the car manufacturer, and $10 from the steering wheel manufacturer. Okay, now that we looked at an example of the supply chain, both in the U.S. and in Europe, and figured out w at which point in the invoicing process we're adding the sales tax or the VAT, uh, I want to walk you through just some of the main differences between sales tax and VAT. Uh, basically, the, the biggest difference is that sales tax is added to finished goods versus um, VAT is added at each stage of the supply chain, like we've seen here, that VAT is added at every step of the way versus sales tax is only added at the point of sale to the end consumer. The second difference is nexus and nexus basically what nexus means is that this is a set of attributes that determines uh, whether you uh, have to collect and remit sales tax in, in a jurisdiction. So basically the, the nexus in sales tax and VAT is very similar uh, for nexus for the sales tax is based on physical location. So if you have a physical location in a state that typically means that you have nexus, but also some other factors are the uh, sales threshold in that state and the number uh, of employees. So basically you have to consider this very carefully whenever you begin doing business in, in a certain state in the US uh, or if your employees now are moving and now with the pandemic and what's going on, basically some employees are moving around the country because they have remote work arrangements and uh, triggering nexuses for their employers. Um, but basically the government now is creating some sets of rules to relieve employers from uh, this nexus. But nonetheless, something you need to pay attention to. Uh, nexus for VAT is established uh, with a very similar concept, which is permanent establishment. And permanent establishment is based on whether you have physical location or if you're incorporated uh, you know, through one of your subsidiaries in one jurisdiction, that will create a nexus for you for VAT, uh, as well as uh, sales uh, threshold. Usually there's some thresholds in the UK, for example, the threshold uh, in 2020 is about 86,000 pounds. So you got to pay attention to the establishment and the physical location and the sales threshold uh, and triggering nexus for both of these types of taxes. Now, the other difference is if not on the invoice. So basically, if there is no uh, sales tax or VAT on the invoice, uh, basically as a consumer, you, if you are a business and consuming these services, you have to be mindful uh, of that you have to pay a uh, use tax. So basically in the US, if you get an invoice uh, from a vendor uh, and it doesn't have um, sales tax on it, you gotta be mindful of uh, paying the use tax. So the use tax is kind of the flip side of the coin of a sales tax. If it's not added to the invoice, you need to report 
uh, use tax and pay it as, as a consumer uh, of these services if you are a business. And it works very similarly with VAT. Basically, if, uh, if you're in a jurisdiction that imposes VAT, like the EU or the UK, and if you're a business and you receive an invoice uh, from a vendor that doesn't have any VAT added to it, uh, you basically have to report that to the government in terms of self-reporting of uh, what they call reverse charge basically you have to self-report that to the government and pay it at your end as if it was added to the invoice um, and then last uh, the last difference between uh, sales tax and VAT uh, relates to the purchases uh, by businesses so this is about B2B sales if you're a business and buying from another business um, for the purpose of uh, processing or reselling the goods uh, like the case here with the car manufacturer selling to a dealer uh, then the car manufacturer can obtain uh, from the dealer a reseller certificate. Basically, when you obtain a reseller certificate uh, from the uh, buyer, you then don't have to add sales tax to the invoice. Uh, however, this is different with VAT because like we said, VAT is added uh, to the invoices at every stage of the supply chain all the way through to the end. But every one of these businesses uh, gets to um, collect uh, VAT and deduct uh, here the input VAT. So basically we said uh, that the car manufacturer will pay to the government whatever they collected 2,000 uh, euros but they get to deduct 10 euros that they pay to the um, steering wheel uh, in terms of VAT. Uh, so basically that's like the last difference between the two here. Uh, between sales tax and VAT. And that's it for this video on the differences between sales tax and VAT. If you liked the video and you learned something new from it, uh, go ahead and uh, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of it and also what other topics uh, you'd like to see discussed on this channel. And until I see you in the next video.